everyone and welcome to this edition of Pearls of Wisdom. I'm Avan Dabash and this is with Nirmal Ban. Now today we want to highlight what's going on when it comes to the online vehicle marketplace. Cars24 is India's biggest online vehicle market space that was founded in the year 2015, was the first unicorn in the auto sector and has a um, lion's market share. The, car, the used car market in India as well is expected to touch close to $100 billion over the next few years. So let's understand the outlook of the digitizing process, leveraging technology, and how we're looking at electric vehicles as well, disrupting the space. Ajendra Jangid is the co-founder and CMO at Cars24 now joins us. Thank you so much. And I want to really take the clock back. When Cars24 began its journey, uh, the car used car market size was pretty small and look to where it's uh, growing to and the way it is growing. How are you looking at the overall inflow for these aspirational high quality cars yeah the, the the category has been evolving as uh you know from from last decade so when we started our journey back in 2015 uh you know they were uh you know barely the customer were you know looking to buy used cars over so there at that point of time customers were looking were very very skeptical about buying used car because market was completely unorganized and everyone was fearing that in, in case, you know, the, if they end up buying used car, uh, they would end, end up getting, you know, something which is a lemon and they end up spending a lot of money on it. So people were shying away from being in this category or transacting in this category. And that's one of the side effects of uh, a completely unorganized market that lacks the trust and transparency. Right? That's where we, fe we felt there's a huge opportunity. Uh, there is a technology play over here which can really bring the trust and transparency in the entire value chain of uh, used car and we entered in the scene back in 2015 uh, and what we really wanted to change is how customer perceive this category and our aim at that point of time was that the way you, how you are when you're buying a new car uh, the, the way you are the way you feel about you know getting something when you're buying a new car and your feeling is very much joyous you are bringing yes you are bringing something you know in your family but at the time when you're selling a car, let's say it becomes in, you feel this is such a painful process. Now I have to really sell my car, meaning I have to speak to so many strangers. I have to really, you know, go out there, find the time to find the best price for my car. Uh, I had to worry about the transaction. I had to make sure that I don't get, you know, get any kind of, you know, fraud while I'm trying to sell it, uh, my car. At the same time, like if, in case you decide to buy a used car, you would say, no, 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 I don't want to go towards it. It's just too much of hassle. So there's just so so many if so many you know doubts consumer have had, and we we felt that it, this category that is ripened to grow because I just quote you some number that in the developed market where the market is you know pretty much organized market, the used car right. you know are four times more in terms of uh, you know transactions as compared to new car. While at, back in 2015, this ratio in India was, you know, less than one. So we felt that, okay, auto in general, at, at, you know, back in 2015, like India was, I think, around six, uh, six or seventh largest auto player in the world. And now it's, you know, in, coming in the top four already. And, uh, you know, car penetration, that another point that we really looked into, which tells us that uh, in India, the car penetration is less than 3%. While uh, in China, which is, you know, a step ahead in terms of how developed that country is from us, uh, the car penetration is twenty uh, percent, while in the in the developed countries the the penetration is roughly close to eighty percent. So you can see the headroom to grow that uh, you know in the category how how much in the de decades to come this country this category will continue to evolve. Uh, and we felt that if you are if you are going to if you are playing if you want to play a game of you know multiple decades right and then you would want to really tap into the opportunity of uh, category growth then auto category is the category to be in. And second, the most important point, which I earlier highlighted, was that market was completely unorganized, right? There's a huge amount of disruption that could be done. And that's where we, we came in the picture and we really changed the game. We really earned the trust of customer. We not only told customers, we not only, you know, positioned ourselves as a trusted player to buy and sell cars. At the same time, we overall, we kind of enhanced the, you know, consumer trust on then buying and selling of used car is far more seamless process than it ever been. So I think, uh, you know, we help category to get organized in a bit and overall right. you know, transition used car started growing yeah. as well. And now I think just to quote some number, you know, used car is ahead of in terms of number of transactions, sure. right? Close to 5 million, 5.5 uh, million the used car get transacted while the number of new car that transacted last year was roughly close to 4 million only. So you could yeah. see the, the amount of shift that is happening and that is going to continue to happen as we move along. 
So Gajendra wanted to understand because for the company Cast24 in specific, is it an incrementally benign competitive landscape? Um, and how is it that you are looking to really capitalize on this? For instance, give us projections when it comes to top line growth, margin expansion potential in light of this. Yeah, so like top line growth, I said that the category is is growing around 10 to 15% uh, CAGR, right? Uh, so category is growing at a phenomenal space, uh, phenomenal pace. So that is one thing that is adding to our top line. Consumers are now more and more, uh, you know, trying to find, you know, as you must be knowing that SUVs is the talk of the town. Customers are now shifting their preference from hatchbacks to uh, straight away SUVs, meaning each car now customers, customers spending more out of their pocket of buying uh, bigger and larger cars as compared to before. So that adds up to uh, another top line uh, factor in our overall PNL. And uh, another factor that also plays very critical role here is that the in tier three, like tier two, tier three, tier four towns, where the the growth of larger growth of auto sector is coming from last, I would say, uh, eight, seven, eight years, uh, that these towns continue to you know upgrade themselves, continue uh, continue to own car, and to give you some number uh, for car twenty four, around seventy percent of car buyers are the first time car buyers, and this number is even higher when we go to the you know tier two, tier three towns. So all of these adds up together, help the category grow and, you know, cars will people grow at the same time. So um, I understand that you have 130 plus auto malls. Give us a sense as to, you know, what this physical infrastructure is that it is needed. And do you think that given that this is needed, it could be maybe at a, a relatively slower growth or on a small revenue opportunity? So in a way right now, our infrastructure is not only physical, but online as well. So while we understand the customer have a need to, you know, uh, come and look and feel of the car as well, but at the same time, there are more and more customers who would want, uh, you know, everything at uh, their doorstep. Meaning, uh, you know, I would just report a number around 90% of the car that we are currently inspecting of the customers who are built, who want to sell a car, you know, call Cars24 at their home. They don't want, they, you know, they prefer convenience over anything else so just imagine the how much amount of shift that has happened so the reliance on the so physical infrastructure is not a limiting factor it's an enabling factor however the major growth that is coming from the fact that we are in a way is omnipresent we are able to expand our operations and business in a manner that really suits uh, customer needs and customer preferences that also help us cover the larger market because we don't depend upon the having a physical infrastructure at each and every place to really serve the customer. So, at, you know, to give another example, right, in most of the tier, tier, tier three towns, we are completely offline or completely, basically, uh, there, there is no physical infrastructure. It's only everything happens at customer doorstep and we do uh, end to end transactions over there while customer, you know, complete the journey online, the entire paperwork and the service happens at the customer uh, home or office only. Okay. And, um, you know, would there be potential concerns when it comes to, you know, some of the new age used car players coming into this space? Um, uh, do you think that uh, that that could be a concern when it comes to um, competition? When you say new age car place in the used car or you're talking about the in the, even in the new car space? Um, talking about, for example, you know, used car players like Finney, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the the market is like I said, market is huge. In, in like yeah. India, the market is huge, and uh, there's roughly close to still. While we have you know able to grow organized uh, you know uh, market of a used car, uh, still this the number still stand less than thirty percent. So it's still okay. almost seventy percent of the markets remain unorganized. So there are plenty of players. There are plenty of you know room for a lot of players to come and make a difference if they want to. But our ambition is to uh, be, be, you know, uh, continue to become a uh, continue to be a market leader in the used car auto space, and not only the newest players uh, we are we are competing with, but also we are in a in a race to really beat the traditional uh, offline OEM players as well. Okay, so help us understand then a little bit more about the market construct at current. What kind of overall demand momentum are you witnessing? What are the current volumes that you're looking at in the used car yeah. segment versus the two-wheeler segment? Yeah, so uh, like market is right now shifting towards more and more um, SUVs. So to give you a number, uh, 
SUVs uh, pre-COVID, the share of SUV in the used car space was less than uh, less than 15 percent in terms of number of cars that was being sold. Fast forward, let's say four years now, the SUV share has already gone more than 35 percent in the number of cars that we sell. Uh, the like to like in the new car, uh, where you know new car in a way is, I would say, I would say three four years ahead of used car in terms of uh, the the change change in overall consumer behavior because the same consumers end up selling their car you know four to five years down the line in new car the shift in SUV is uh, you know very very drastic and over there the share of SUV has uh, skyrocketed to sixty percent. Now all of, all all of these shifts in consumer behavior indicates that number one customer is ready to spend more money because SUVs are more expensive or more I would say more pricier uh, at the same time you know that, that also tells because the infrastructure is getting better the road conditions are getting better meaning more and more customers are you know feeling that they need to own a car to be really able to you know in a way uh, you know uh, you know commute on the road so one fundamental shift that I have been noticing in the category is that Car as a uh, you know car as a piece of machine was always aspirational. I mean, I want to own a car to really upgrade myself in the uh, you know society or in a way it's like a life upgrade that you're talking about. But the shift that is happening uh, and which has actually has happened in the developed countries earlier, many decades ago, that car is becoming more of a, like a utility than ever before. It means I need car now <coughs> to really to you know fulfill my fundamental or basic needs. It's just not this status symbol that I'm looking at. So when any when any category becomes a fundamental need or utility, the, the demands automatically starts becoming more more higher because that is not something good to have. That is a must have uh, because you feel that this is something which uh, for me to have as just to you know it's become a routine part of my life. So that shift has started happening, especially post COVID era, where customer would want to now own a car to the need of it. So there, there are so many there are so many uh, you know tailwinds coming into this category that is really going to help not only used car market but as well as the new car market as well. Okay and um, what is the outlook uh, then when it comes to uh, the used electric vehicles becoming available in the market? Are you seeing growing yeah. demand? How are you looking at that avenue? Yeah so used EV vehicle have I think uh, it has made a lot of uh, waves in the two-wheeler category. We are yet to foray into two-wheeler category by the way. But they have really disrupted in terms of market share. Uh, over there, the market share has already climbed up over 15-20%. Uh, however, there's so much of, I would say, regulatory play and subsidy play in the EV ecosystem right now, which is in a way, uh, you know, uh, making every business leaders difficult to predict on how fast the adoption will become because a lot of growth in the EV plays right now depending upon the subsidies that government is providing. That's number one. Um, and that same applies in the car category as well. And number two is again the charging ecosystem. So what I am imagining is that EV play in the car category will be far slower as compared to two-wheeler category. And the primary reason for this would be is the number one, the charging charging ecosystem is yet to uh, yet to become mainstream. However, they are they are, they are uh, you know in the pocket. You are hearing good news about more and more societies. Uh, coming up with a charging option, but still, as compared to how it should be, it's far more limited. Number two, that is a uh, you know restriction. The, the the thing that is right now uh, not letting this industry grow as much as it is grown the two wheeler is the price. The price point wise, uh, the EV is still a expensive option. And like we in the US car category, the, the the resale price of electric vehicle is still not very well determined. So whenever they are in a way, you know, comparing EV and comparing, uh, you know, ICE engine car, uh, the resale value, when you when you make in the price of resale value, the, you know, the ICE engine car stays, you know, so very much close to the EV. So there are still a lot of things to be figured out in EV to become uh, a mainstream and become, you know, accelerate that option. Uh, however, I am seeing they will help right now in the used car category, the overall, if you see the number of EV cars on the road, uh, as compared to let's say in India, have roughly close to three crore uh, cars on the road, uh, and the share of EV cars is less than uh, less than five lakh. So you can just imagine the, the ratio is less than one percent or less than two percent. So as the share goes higher, 
the adoption the ecosystem will start uh, you know uh, it start building and i'm hoping that as and when as i think overall what my prediction is that it will take at least 5 to 10 years ev to become mainstream in uh, car category uh, and the used car category in particular as well okay and you are also looking at you know overseas opportunities you said you wanted to be known as the game changer within the pre owned car segment in the uae tell us more yeah yeah so we have been in the market for uh, you know few years uh, the uae market is very very exciting uh, uae is known for the their cars high end cars as all of us know so so what what we wanted to do is that we have cracked the playbook of used car market in india and what we want what we went with the aim that we have been able to really solve the pain points and solve, solve the entire value chain in india successfully uh, we have got a right product uh, and the right technology in place now we have taken the same product and technology uh, overseas and really solving the same pain points because the, the, the good part about our category is that pain points are very much similar when you go you know outside india as well like when you're buying a used car the pain points are fairly similar right am i getting a right car it does it have the right you know uh, you know will this car give me problem after i buy or not whether you know am i getting a proper warranty on the car or not is something which you know with the car car comes with the uh, you know the financing options or not so given all of those pain points have are fairly similar across uh, geography uh, we are able to you know replay those playbook in those uh, countries and able to it, it is also helping a scale one thing that we know that what we are going to do like across across countries is to really solve for the customer uh, experience we want to make sure because this this category has a lot of word of mouth play you you don't buy and sell cars you know every month or every quarter right you end up buying and selling car you know once in 4 5 6 years so you are going to you know go with a player that has really really strong reputation and credibility right so customer experience becomes our number one and top priority and that really fuels the growth that what we are having currently uh, in the overseas market that we are presenting in uae in australia is one uh, two of them and um, what is the, then uh, the overall outlook for um, you know the message that you want to send across because some analysts would say that the company is underappreciated uh, investors are a bit disenchanted maybe um, by the stock performance to a certain extent do you think that we are very early at the stage when it comes to car ownership it's a highly underpenetrated market and that the growth prospects down the line are looking very promising what's the message that you want to give Yeah yeah so like i said at the earlier like in the beginning of my call the our market is right now evolving at a very very fast rate right car penetration is you know uh, very low uh, now more and more uh, you know customers are buying a car getting now more as the market is getting organized now customers don't not do not differentiate as we go you know as we move forward as we go into the future the customer will not feel the difference between whether they are buying a new car or a used car so i think the sentiments will going to evolve and only going to evolve in the positive direction a uh, lot of current i would say undercurrent that is uh, playing is because the overseas, the us stock market is kind of you know influencing the sentiments uh, that is also happening in india but india is having a very very different story uh, we are right now growing at much much faster pace as compared to uh, you know us uh, our we have got a huge amount of opportunity ahead of us the the tagger which we are talking about 10 to 15% is nowhere nowhere exists uh, currently around you know across the globe uh, we are we are in a market leading position here in india and going to become a leading position in overseas market that we are present so i'm very i'm very very hopeful and uh, i'm very confident that uh, you know the the market is going to reward the player that is having a market not only market leading position at the same time who has able to disrupt the category at the core of it okay good to have you on board but before we let you go given yeah. that it's a uh, pearls of wisdom give us an insight as to what the pearls of wisdom are uh, being at the forefront being such a young company and any key lessons that you'd like to impart i think the one thing that we have learned uh, our business in india is to turn every challenge into an opportunity uh what i mean by that is that there are many things that are not in our control like just just to talk about whether you know demonetization or covid or there are so many headwinds that can come into your play and that can really 
disturbed all your planning and all your uh, numbers but there is an opportunity lies in each and every challenge that comes in front of you what you have to really uh, you know tell yourself that okay okay maybe it's some it didn't pl- plan out the way you wanted but given now landscape has changed there are new challenges but they, at the same time there are new opportunities so you have to really uh, move on extremely quickly move very very fast and tap on to those opportunities so that you are able to recover out of the damage that has been done because of those change in circumstances so i think this is the one thing which we keep telling ourselves don't be afraid uh, challenges will come and you know unexpected things will happen uh, many of things either you know caused by something which you have never seen or expected it to be but uh, try it and find out opportunity in each and every challenge that comes to you and really you know shake yourself up and uh, move ahead and grab it Okay good to have you Gajendra thank you for being candid and sharing with us the outlook and being with us today Thank you thank you Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss an update from Nirmal Bang